the second greatest command in the Bible is found in Matthew chapter 22, verse 39, where Jesus says, The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, if we're honest with ourselves, how many of us love our neighbor as ourselves? How many of us put our neighbor before ourselves? Yeah, as Christians, God actually calls us to love our enemies. But our human nature is sinful and is always fighting against the Spirit. But yet we are still called and commanded to love our enemies, to love our neighbor. Love is very powerful. And that should be one of those truths that Jesus wasn't telling us to go out and be cruel and be unfriendly and be disrespectful and and to be hateful towards people, but rather Jesus is setting the example and he's telling us how we are to respond to other individuals that we meet that come into our lives. And I found that when talking with other people about God and Christianity and the Bible, that it's always good to have that verse in your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. As much as you might not like what they've done to you, if they're persecuting you, calling you bad names, making fun of you, being, you know, mocking you. Always keep that in mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your enemies. And I, frankly, when I think of that in my mind, it allows me to be more humble. It allows me to be able to let the objections be raised. It allows me to not always have to get the last word out, but rather listen and hear what they have to say. And be, res be, be friendly, be respectful. Love, you know. When Jesus is calling us to love, and that it's the second greatest commandment, it would help if we actually knew what love is and how God defines love. So I'm going to bring up that verse in Corinthians where it talks exactly what love is. It's found in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And I'll read from the New International Version. It says, love is patient. Right there, remember, I was just talking about how when I'm confronted with people and I start talking about God or whatever with people, always keep that in mind, that love your neighbor as yourself. Love is patient. Be patient. Don't always try to get the, the last word, you know, in. But be patient. Your time will come to speak. And while you are waiting to speak, think about what to say. And, and really think, though. You don't have to feel rushed in order to speak back to some objection somebody might raise. Give it time. Be patient. Love is kind. You don't have to use a, a high-toned voice. You don't have to come, you know, off rude, like, well, I don't know, you do, you know. You know, sometimes when we're communicating with each other, you know, we kind of give that impression. 
that, you know, comes off unfriendly, is unkind. Well, true love, according to the way God says it is, is it's kind. It does not envy, right? It's not jealous. It does not boast. It is not proud, always having a humble spirit when talking with people. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. And that's another thing when, when having a debate with someone or a conversation, a lot of times people get angry. And that is not what showing love is. If we are called to love our neighbor as ourselves, try not to become angry. It's not easily angered but it shows love. It keeps no record of wrongs. You know, a lot of times when people are debating or getting into conversations, they'll say, well, you said this. Well, you said that. But understand that we're not perfect either. Sometimes we say things, we mess up. Understand that. Be sensitive. Show compassion. Because true love doesn't keep no record of wrongs. But look at the bigger picture. Understand. Relate. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. And truth is a wonderful thing. Jesus said, and the truth shall set you free. And that is a very blessed thing to rejoice about. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. Always perseveres. And love never fails. So, that is what the Bible says love is, God's Word. Now, the Bible claims to be the Word of God, and I believe that by faith. Not a blind faith, but a reasonable faith. And, of course, this isn't the video to discuss the reasons why I believe, you know, there are the evidences behind that. But, nevertheless, this is how the Bible um, is describing love. And a lot of people have this idea of love as some ooey-gooey feeling or buying people lots of presents or doing a lot of nice things. But love is so much more than that. See, you have the world's definition of love and then you have God's definition of love. And God's definition of love is so much more beautiful, so much more it changes a person from the inside out. But the world's love is shallow. It's artificial. It's more outward appearances. You know, oh, you bought me this and, you know, you did this for me. And while all that's good and everything, the world's definition of love, it doesn't address, you know, these very other important aspects like it's, it's patient, it's kind, it's not envy, it's not boast, not proud. So, I guess the point of this video is just to emphasize that we are called to love each other and we are to love in the way that I've just read here from 1 Corinthians. And I think that it's a very important thing to always keep in mind and that not a lot of Christians will talk about um, or that actually are um, striving to obey or do in their life for whatever reason, I'm not sure. But this is just about what we're called to do love and what love is.